Hey everybody, I am Amos, and you are going to want to strap in because today we are diving into the Dark Glass Electronics Aggressively Distorting Advanced Machine. There's a lot to cover with this one, so please hold any questions, comments, spontaneous outbursts of applause until the end of the demonstration. Now, as you may know, this is the signature pedal of one Adam Nolly Getgood, who is a producer, a mixer, an engineer, a programmer, a prominent gentleman, an all-around bass monster. Like Nolly, this pedal combines a lot of rad things into one package. It's got a compressor, it's got a mid-focused EQ, it's got a drive section, it's got cabinet simulation. It's got a lot of stuff. It's also covered in lights and looks super festive. So let's start with a spin around the outside and to kind of help keep us focused, we are going to follow the path your signal takes once it hits the input. So the first thing your signal encounters is the compressor. Now this is not the same single knob compressor that we've seen on other dark glass products like the Microtubes 500 or the X7. This one is modeled after a universally loved studio compressor. So this compressor has two controls. There is a knob up here that controls the threshold or the point at which the compressor becomes active and there's a rotary foot switch down here which you can turn to select the ratio, which is to say how dramatically your signal is squooshed once it passes the threshold. All right, so let's check out just the compressor for a second. next thing your signal hits after the compressor is the drive section. You control the drive section with two knobs up here, labeled drive and character, and character is more like a general EQ, kind of a treble roll off, and this rotary foot switch right here, which you can turn to select one of five different distortion engines. These drives are unique to this pedal and are not modeled on anything that Dark Glass has done before. Once we are compressed and distorted, we hit the cabinet simulator. Now this pedal comes loaded with five impulse responses, so you can hear how it would sound through properly mic'd cabinets in a studio setting. And as I hope we all know by this point, you can connect this pedal to your computer with an included USB cable, fire up the dark glass suite, and change any of these to any of those. 
there is a ton of other stuff you could do with this pedal in the dark glass suite, but we are gonna hit that later. And we actually have to back up just a scotch because after your signal leaves the compressor stage of this pedal, it actually gets split with one side getting the distortion and cabinet simulator that we just talked about, and the other side stays clean until it hits this blend knob. There's a bit of a secret sauce here because your clean tone is processed in the pedal with a special multi-band compressor that you actually can't control, but it was designed by Nolly, so relax. So at this point, we finally hit the EQ. Now this is centered on the same frequencies that Dark Glass has been using for a while, and it breaks down to a low shelf, high shelf, and a four band mid control centered at 250, 500, 1.5, and 3K. Everybody with me so far? So once you've done all of your twiddling and fiddling with your compression and your distortion and your cabinet simulator and your blend and your EQ and all that kind of stuff, my gosh, this pedal does a lot of things. You can save a preset. In fact, you can save three of them one for each of these foot switches. You just hold the foot switch down, wait for the lights to blink, and you're good. You can also harness the power of metal to turn the tuner on and off, turn the pedal on and off, and <clears throat> put it in performance lock. Oof. Performance lock is a great mode to put this pedal in once you have selected and saved all of your sounds because it prevents turning any of the knobs from changing your sound at all, although you can still switch presets and turn the tuner on. So real quick, here on the back is your input, your quarter eighth inch auxiliary in, headphone output, and dedicated volume, balanced left and right outputs, because you can use this pedal as your recording interface when you connect it to your computer with a USB cable. You can also control it with MIDI, but we're not gonna have time to get to that. Over here is the XLR out and ground lift, and this side has a vent on it, which I just wanted to show you because it looks awesome. Friends, this pedal is intense. I think this is dark glass coming for your entire pedal board. If you hired me for a gig to play electric bass and didn't tell me anything about it, I would bring a preamp with some EQ shaping, a drive, a decent compressor, and a tuner. And they are all in this little green box. For the size of this pedal, it does an awful lot, but that also means it's pretty complex and takes a little bit of getting used to. To wit, I kind of had to train myself how to look at it. When you're looking at your settings, you have to remember to look at where the lights are, not where the knob indicators are. And when you're reading the EQ, 
you're actually looking for the lit point that's the furthest away up or down from that colored center row of lights. Even the tuner, which is very clever, took me just a little bit of getting used to before I could see what letter is being displayed. I love the performance lock mode idea. I really recommend it, especially because when you step on the foot switches to change your patch, it's easy to inadvertently turn it. As I said before, you can not only change cab sims once you connect this pedal to your computer, but there are also lots of routing options for the various outputs. You can fine tune the attack and release of the compressor. You can adjust the frequency range of the drive so you can leave the low end clear or just have it affect the mids. You can change the frequency centers of the EQ from the dark glass setup to something a little more conventional. Uh, don't do this, dark glasses EQ is amazing. You can even change where the cabinet simulator goes in the signal chain. This, like the element that it shares a lot of design appointments with, is a future-focused platform. And Dark Glass has already released a really big update for this pedal that includes all of that routing stuff I just talked about, and improving the range of the tuner down to a low A. But being able to change where something goes in the signal chain, I like that a lot. That's the kind of fussiness that I'm here for. And remember, this also functions as an interface for your DAW. It can be the audio output of your computer. It has Bluetooth capabilities, and I honestly didn't even get into the MIDI part at all because that's not how I roll, but this pedal can do it if that's how you roll. I'm excited to see what comes next. I am literally just about out of words. This has been the Aggressively Distorting Advanced Machine. I have been Amos, you have been amazing. I will see you on the next one.